Welcome back to our special four-part series called Elevating Your Enterprise Advanced Strategies for Women in Business. It's a series where we navigate the unique challenges that are faced by women like us, the bold female founders who dared to dream big. Today, we're tackling a crucial turning point in your entrepreneurial journey, scaling your business sustainably while staying true to its core values. There comes a time in most entrepreneurial journeys where you come to a standstill. Your business has grown, is making really great money, but there's a problem. You are at a crossroad. You've nurtured your business from a seedling to a flourishing success story, only to find that as it grows, so does the demand on your time. You're actually working more hours than ever before, but your earnings and profits seem to have hit a ceiling because there's only so many hours in the day. And that leads you to feel very trapped in a cycle of exertion where you're putting so much out into the world, but there's little room to grow. It's a paradox of success that leaves you feeling very exhausted. You're craving change and you need some balance. So what do you do? You've worked so hard to get where you are that it would be devastating to stop and to turn your back on your business but you know that you simply can't push yourself any further. You are drowning without a life raft and you can't sustain this killer pace indefinitely. So what's the solution? Firstly, congratulations on the thousands of hours of heart, soul, blood, sweat and tears that it has taken you to get to this point. You are amazing. Secondly, don't give up. The answer lies in pivoting your business. The answer is in strategic scaling. That's a process that's designed to break the shackles of your time for money exchange. It's offering you unlimited potential for financial growth while gifting you the time freedom that you so richly deserve. This episode is dedicated to showing you how that's not just possible but it is within your reach. If you're new here, I'm Samantha Bell, the founder and creative director of 16th Ave Creative Studio, a one-stop solution for women to start and grow their businesses through Squarespace website design, copywriting, brand design, and email marketing services. I'm the host of the Brilliant Business Beautiful Life podcast and course creator of Startup Success. And I talk about all things entrepreneurship, building an online service business and creating a life that you adore. So hello and welcome. It's great to have you in our world. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And it also helps us to be able to keep creating more co great content and reach more people. Now, let's get into scaling your business while maintaining its core values. And that starts with understanding what sustainable scaling is. When we talk about scaling your business, we're looking at growth that is smart and sustainable, meaning you can do it for the long term. That's all sustainable means, doing it long term. It's like nurturing a plant. If you want it to grow, but if it shoots up too fast, it may not have the strong roots that it needs to be able to thrive. Sustainable scaling is about balance and intention. It's growth that is planned and paced so that your business can stay healthy, but importantly, also stay true to what made it great right at the very beginning. Sustainable scaling is simply like building a house. I know I use the house building analogy a lot and I'm using it again today. So you start with your solid foundation, which is represented by your core business values and your mission. And as you add each brick on top of each other, building this business, or if you want to relate those bricks to business terms, is each new client, each new product, each new service you create. You're careful to make sure that you lay those 
bricks with the same care and commitment to quality as the very first one. And this way, as the structure of your business grows taller, it remains sturdy and true to your original vision. Now, as your business expands, it can be quite easy to lose sight of what made it unique originally. Sustainable scaling involves embedding your core values into every aspect of your business growth. It means training new team members or virtual team members to understand not just what they're doing, but why they're doing it. You want to get back to the why, the purpose behind their work that aligns with the business's broader goals. You have so much more impact, such better results if you always stay firmly connected to your why. That's what propels you every single day, your why. Now, the pace of your scaling is crucial. Imagine you are a little baby and you're trying to run before you can walk. You're scooting around in your nappy on the floor and all of a sudden you decide you're going to run. What's going to happen? Nothing good. You're going to fall over. You're going to hit your head. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to cry to mummy. That's because you're not ready to run yet. You haven't even taken your first steps. The same goes for your business. If you expand too quickly, you may not have the systems, the virtual support, the staff or the resources in place to support that growth. Growing at a pace that you can manage means you're less likely to make missteps. You're less likely to fall over and hurt yourself. And you're less likely to do things that will compromise the quality or performance of your business. Every decision you make should be strategic, whether that's hiring new team members, virtual team members, to choosing which new markets to enter and which opportunities to go after. And it's not about saying yes to every opportunity, but about choosing the right opportunities that align with your why and where you want your business to be in the future. You don't have to accept every single opportunity that crosses your path. Most likely, you're going to be presented many opportunities in your business journey. Some will be amazing, some won't be. But when you're looking at them, what you want to do is look at them through the lens of your why. Why are you here? Why are you doing what you're doing? And does this opportunity align with that why? Is it going to help you get closer to that? If it doesn't, makes it very, very easy to say an elegant no. And if it does align, it makes it very easy to get excited, to get on board and to take that opportunity on and run with it. So you you want to be very strategic about making the right choices that are going to move you forwards and achieve your why and keep in alignment with your purpose. Now, another way to help you achieve your why and to scale and grow in a sustainable way is incorporating feedback into your processes because as you grow, feedback really needs to become the compass that's guiding your business in conjunction with your why. You need to listen to your customers' your clients, your employees, and even your own experiences. They all give you very valuable information that can guide you in your scaling efforts. It's about making adjustments based on what works and what doesn't work and making sure your growth is responsive and well-informed. And finally, sustainable scaling is about being prepared for change. Now, as entrepreneurs, we love change. We chase it, we seek it, we crave it, and we embrace it with open arms. If you're not on board with change, you need to get on board with change. You cannot grow, you cannot scale, you cannot evolve without it. Now, as your business changes, as it does grow, your role is going to evolve. You're going to shift from doing to overseeing from hands-on to strategic planning. And preparing for these changes mentally and practically 
make sure that as your business scales up, you are ready to scale up with it. And this is where embracing a CEO mindset and acting like a true leader, like the only leader in your business, comes into play now more than ever before. Way back in episode two, I talked about stepping into your CEO shoes as a small business owner, exactly what that looks like and how to do it. It's about embracing a top-down approach to running your business formulating very strong strategies, focusing on tangible results, delegating to your team, communicating as the leader, and the importance of simplifying processes, cutting through the fluff and focusing on what matters. Also mastering the art of money management and practicing patience. When you embrace these CEO practices and mindsets, you really can make the right decisions for scaling your online service business. If you want to learn more about how to step into your CEO shoes and what that looks like, do have a listen to episode two. I'll pop the link in the show notes below. And I think it'll be very timely listening to in conjunction with listening to this episode. It's really going to embed those practices in your mind and help you embrace them And if you haven't already, it's going to help you incorporate them into your daily practices. Very well worth having a listen to episode two. Now, through sustainable scaling, you can expand your business without sacrificing the qualities that made it successful in the first place. It's about growing, not just for the sake of getting bigger, but for becoming better becoming stronger, becoming more capable of achieving the vision that you set out to achieve while giving you freedom and even outperforming the vision you initially set out to achieve because your vision when you started could not possibly envision where you can go. And now that you've got to this point, your vision is probably even bigger than it was when you started. And this form of scaling is going to allow you to achieve that while giving you freedom. And when it's time to scale your business, the people that you bring on board become the architects of your growth. So it's really important to get the right people on your team. Hiring or outsourcing isn't just about filling a spot. It's easy to fill a spot but it can actually be your undoing. It can hurt your business and put you backwards if you fill a spot and don't look at the bigger picture. You want to find individuals who are going to carry the torch of your vision into the future. It's essential to look beyond their resume and see the person behind it and see if they are a person who can grow with your company. You're not just building a team. You're not just looking for workers. You are seeking partners in your mission, advocates for your brand and contributors to your culture. So it's really important to get that into your head whenever you're looking at adding to your virtual team. I keep talking virtual because that's the most effective, most cost efficient way of building a team rather than having on-site team. Building a team that resonates with your core values starts with very clear communication from the job description to the interview process. Every single step should be infused with your business's mission, with your why. It's not just about what you do, but why you do it. And being clear in this and communicating this beautifully will attract people to your business who are intrinsically aligned with your vision and are excited by your purpose and want to get on board. They're the ones that are going to go the extra mile, not because they have to, but because they want to, because they believe in the direction you're headed. When you're considering who you're going to work with or outsource to, also explore untapped talent pools. And that means looking in places you may not have considered before, places that aren't the norm to look for people to join your team. So it could mean reaching out to community organisations, 
getting into online forums and having conversations with people inside them and people that really start to say things that pique your attention and you think they get it. I need to speak with that person. They're the people you want. Or even asking your clients if they know someone who would be a great fit because sometimes the best team members come from the most of unexpected places. You need to think about hiring for attitude and training for skill. Skills can be taught, but passion, dedication, and a positive attitude are innate. You can't teach those things. A person either has them or they don't. And a person with the right mindset, they can learn anything. They can learn the ropes of your business. You can teach them what they need to know and they can become one of the best assets to your business. They'll bring energy. They'll bring fresh ideas that can really invigorate your business and help you get to your big picture vision. They will help you travel the trajectory that you need to. Involving clients in the hiring process might sound unconventional, but who better to help you identify a great team member than the people who know and love you and your services the best? They've got a vested interest in you and in helping you succeed, and they can give you very unique insights into the kind of people who would help strengthen your brand and your business. As you're building your team, Focus on creating a culture of growth, of learning, of mutual respect and support. Encourage their ideas. Give them opportunities for professional development and celebrate them. Let them know when they've done something amazing or had a great idea or something that you've been inspired by from them. When your team feels valued and that you are invested in them, they're going to contribute not just to your growth, but to the sustainability of your business. And it's going to be a joy to work with them. They're going to contribute so much more because they love being a part of your vision and a part of you. So remember that team building also is an ongoing process. As your business scales, your team's needs are going to evolve. You might need to take on more. You might need to change roles and, and pivot all along the way. So regular check-ins, feedback sessions, team building activities, they're all going to help maintain that beautiful alignment that you've created in your business and ensure that all of you are moving together towards your common goals by carefully curating a team that shares your vision and your values and goals you're helping create another solid layer in the foundation of your business that's going to help you scale. It's about growing together, learning from each other and building a business that's not just bigger, but is better and more aligned with the vision that set you on this path in the first place. Now, imagine having that brilliant team, but amplified. You've got all these diligent, amazing talented, dedicated helpers who never get tired. They never make mistakes and they free you up to focus on growing your business and making money. This is automation and that is what automation can do for you. It's not about replacing people. It's about enhancing the people who are in your team, uh, enhancing their ability to contribute to doing more meaningful creative work. And in the world of scaling, automation is like finding the secret passage that leads straight to efficiency and making the people in your team's job easier so that they can do even more, even better. So start simple. Look at the tasks you do every day, your team does every day, all the things, answering emails, scheduling social media posts, updating customer records, delivering the services, the marketing, the sales, everything. All these necessary time-consuming tasks, they are prime for automating. And with tools designed for these purposes, you can set them up once and let them run in the background. Your business keeps moving and you get to reclaim so many hours every single day. And your customer service can benefit greatly from automation too. 
chatbots, for example, they can handle common inquiries on your website, provide instant responses to people no matter what time of day or night it is. And this means your customers really feel heard and helped even when no one's available to help them. And for more complex issues, they can get all the initial information that your team needs to make their job easier when it's time for them to create that human connection. Marketing automation tools can also transform how you reach and engage with your audience. They can personalize customer experiences by sending targeted messages at just the right time. Instead of blasting out generic campaigns, automation allows you to nurture individual customer journeys and build relationships that lead to loyalty and growth. And your business analytics, they can also be automated, giving you real-time dashboards and lots of insights, which means you can very quickly understand how your business is performing and then make really smart decisions about where you need to go without having to flip through countless spreadsheets or reports. With all of these tools, you are not just collecting data, you're actually unlocking their power to guide your growth. It's very powerful. And as you introduce automation into your business, do it thoughtfully. Ensure that each automated process does align with your experience, with your goals, with your customer experience goals and with the business values. The human touch is invaluable. Automation should only enhance it, not detract from it. And so that the personal feel of your service is only elevated, not detracted from. Automation is an ally for scaling your business. It's a tool, but it's not going to replace the people. You want to keep that personal touch. It's about working smarter, not harder, and letting technology handle the heavy list lifting. So with the right automated processes in place, you can really scale your business sustainably and give you the freedom to innovate and strategize for the future. Now, as your customer base grows, your client base, and demand increases, you may find the need to scale your production or services to keep up. And this is a pivotal moment for any business and getting it right is crucial. And I imagine that this is where you are right now. Diversifying your offerings means you can meet a broader range of customer needs while streamlining what you already provide, which is only going to enhance your efficiency, but without sacrificing the quality your clients have come to expect. Partnerships can also be a powerful tool for scaling. By collaborating with other businesses, you can actually expand your capabilities and offer a wider array of services to your clients. For example, if you run a marketing firm and you partner with a graphic design agency, you're then able to offer your clients full package solutions without the need to hire an in-house design team. Perfect. Strategic partnerships like this can lead to shared growth and success and access to an even larger client base because you'll be accessing the person that you're collaborating with. You'll be accessing their clients as well. Now, the next step, this is probably my favorite, and it's one I actively work on within my own business because of the freedom it gives me as the founder. My favorite activity in scaling my business is productizing services. It is such an innovative way to scale your business. Actually, inside my online course, Startup Success, I teach you how right from the very beginning of building your business, how to productize a service so that you have built scalability into your business right from day one. That is a game changer. Building scalability into your business from the outset will change the trajectory of your business and allow you time and financial freedoms that will blow your mind. 
And it's something that people don't even think about when they're starting their business and they only think about two, three, four years in when they're in this situation where they are so time strapped and stressed that they've got to do something. By doing it early, you avoid that. So I've made it part of startup success because of that reason, because it's something people don't even know is possible when they're starting their business. And if they do incorporate it at that stage, at the beginning, it opens up worlds of opportunity and growth that will impact their life, their business from the very beginning. It means they're going to avoid a lot of the problems associated with solely trading their time for money, which is the traditional nature of an online service business. So in Startup Success, I give them the tools and the knowledge to not be traditional, but to be truly entrepreneurial and creative in their approach to business. I think you can tell I'm quite excited about this topic and how I can help so many women achieve even greater success in their business and their life than they've ever dreamed of before. So what exactly is productizing your services? It's quite simple. It means turning your services into standardized sellable products. For instance, if you are a business coach, instead of one-on-one sessions, you can create an online course that distills your teaching into a format that hundreds or even thousands of people can access. And what this does is not only free up your time, but it creates a new revenue stream into your business that is less dependent on you needing to directly provide the coaching. Can you imagine the impact your business can have if your coaching services could reach thousands of people instead of just 50 per year? The impact you create on your clients and your business and your freedom is mind-blowing. Templates and toolkits are more perfect examples of productized services. They're the recipe of the service world, providing the steps and ingredients, or in terms of business, the structure and components for your clients to achieve a desired result on their own. For example, a social media consultant might offer a toolkit for crafting a month's worth of posts. It's a one-time effort for you to create, but it can be sold for an infinite number of times. And the beauty of productized services is their scalability. Once the initial time investment is made in creating these products, they can be sold all around the clock, all year long with minimal additional time required from you. So this transforms your business model from one that trades time for money to one that has the potential for unlimited income and gives you, the founder, unlimited freedom. With all the extra profit pouring into your business, you can build a highly skilled, lean, remote team around you to do all of the day-to-day running of the business, which leaves you free to focus on the high level creativity and money generating thought leadership activities that will allow your business to continue to grow and thrive even more. So you can see why this is my absolute favorite aspect of scaling and why I'm so passionate about it and why I created Startup Success. Startup Success I created to not only help women build a business that they love, but to build it in a way that is scalable from day one and that gets them out of a life they just put up with and into a life and a business they adore by escaping the nine to five and doing their own thing. So investing the time to develop these productized services is indeed a game changer. It allows you to leverage your expertise in a way that is not limited by the number of hours in the day. You can serve more people, have a greater impact and grow your business beyond what traditional service models allow. It is a strategic move that can redefine your business and set the stage for limitless growth. Doesn't that sound amazing? Limitless growth. As your business begins to scale up, it's like planting more seeds in your garden 
You want each new plant to flourish just like the first. Now here, I'm going to pick on McDonald's. Love them or hate them, McDonald's are a great example of scaling a business. Did you notice one important thing? I didn't say they're a perfect example. I said they're a great example. There's a big difference. What they've done very well is create a repeatable structure, processes, branding, and messaging that are consistent throughout every single store, throughout every single country around the world. They've got that down pat. However, what they have not perfected is their quality control. Have you ever noticed that the images of their burgers or their fries or their whatever in their marketing campaign and advertising campaigns, they show the most delectable, appealing, perfectly presented food that you can imagine? They show people amazed and delighted by these gorgeous burgers and they've got people salivating at the very thought of one. But the reality is, depending on what store you go to, you are more likely to get a sloppy, tiny bun with a greasy meat patty thrown onto it, messy mayo, wilting lettuce, and a burger that looks nothing like what was represented in their advertising. It's going to look like it's been thrown into a bag, shaken around and thrown at you, and you just get that messy result. They have their processes down pat, but their quality control is appalling. The presentation of the burger depends on the mood and the interest level of the teenager who throws it into that cardboard box. And guess what? That teenager is not committed or aligned to the values of McDonald's. That teenager is there for the paycheck they get and the ability to earn some money while they're daydreaming about what they want to do with their friends on the weekend and saving money for their first car. And where does the responsibility lie for this lackluster outcome of quality control? It lies very firmly with the McDonald's management team. Instead of hiring quality people who are aligned to their purpose, they opt us for the cheapest labour, the shortcuts and quantity over quality. So in the delivery of the quality of the products they advertise, McDonald's has completely missed the mark. You do not want to be the online service version of a McDonald's franchise. Quality control is essential in every business. And you've built your business to a great level. Your clients love you. You've got great services and your quality is there. Our quality checks and balances should be a part of your daily routine of growing and adapting as your business does. They're not just stop gaps. They are an integral part to ensuring that each new product or service you offer meets the high standards you've already established. Achieving the best quality control starts with building a team that is aligned with your purpose and your values and actually cares about delivering on them. Continuous improvement, quality control and your team members, they are the keys to maintaining your quality. Just as a gardener is always learning, always tweaking the amounts of sun or water or fertilizer that their plants get, you should always be looking at your processes and asking, how can we be better? But remember, quality control is not something you do once. It's ongoing. It's not enough to set up systems and forget about them. You need to be constantly monitoring and adjusting, just like that gardener does with the plants they're growing. Now, this might mean regular training for your team, scheduled check-ins, production processes, and talking to your clients. Customer feedback is the sunlight that helps your business grow in the right direction. Listen to it, learn from it, and let it guide you. If your customers are telling you something isn't working, take it seriously because they're the ones experiencing your services and they can be your most valuable source of quality control. As your business grows, you need to find ways to keep that personal touch alive, whether it's through customer service, 
personalized follow-ups or community engagement. This all helps to maintain the quality and character of your brand. Finally, don't be afraid to pump the brakes if you feel your quality is slipping. It is far better to slow down, reevaluate and get things right rather than pushing forwards too quickly and compromising your business's reputation. Maintaining quality during growth, particularly when you're trying to scale, is a delicate dance, but it is one that's absolutely critical to your long-term success. Remember, when it comes to quality, it's not about the speed of the growth, but the strength of your roots. You do not want to be known as a McDonald's burger. Scaling your business is like planting that garden, a garden that's destined to grow. It requires patience, nurturing, and the right tools. But once it blossoms, it rewards you with the freedom to enjoy the beauty that it holds. So this is for you, for the late nights, for the early mornings, for the dreams you've held close to your heart. Scaling your business is the path to reclaiming your time and making space for those dreams to unfold. Imagine a day that starts on your terms with a team you trust, processes that run like clockwork, where you no longer need to manage every detail. This freedom means enjoying your morning coffee without rushing, taking the time to savor the sunrise, knowing your business is thriving. It's about creating a space where your creativity can flourish, not in the narrow gaps in between tasks, but in the expansive hours that you've reclaimed. This newfound time isn't just a pause. It's an opportunity to strategize and innovate. It's where you can dream bigger, plan your next bold move and set the wheels in motion to achieve it. And this freedom allows you to step back and see the bigger picture, to understand your business from new heights and to continue to guide it with the clear visionary hand as the leader in your business. But it's not just about business. This freedom touches your personal life deeply. It's about more time with family, exploring passions outside of work and caring for your well-being. It's the little things like reading a book, taking a long walk, learning something new, things that now fit comfortably into your day, whereas they didn't before. For any entrepreneur on the brink of scaling, this is about crafting a life that's rich in more than just business success. It's about creating a legacy, building a story that intertwines professional achievement with personal fulfillment. It's about living fully, not just working tirelessly. And finally, remember, scaling is about unlocking potential, not just the potential of your business, but of your life. It's about those moments of joy that come from knowing you've built something enduring and empowering. So here's to the freedom, here's to the journey of scaling and to the life you're shaping with every single step you take. Scaling your business sustainably is about growth with purpose, intention and a firm grasp on the values that define your brand. So as we've explored today, there are many paths to scaling, but all should lead you to a place where your business works for you. It gives you the freedom to live the beautiful life you've envisioned while running the brilliant business that you've built. Thank you so much for your time with me today as we've chatted about elevating your business. And I'd love for you to join me again next week as we continue to uncover advanced strategies that will help you build and scale the business of your dreams. Stay brilliant, stay beautiful, and keep on building the business and life you adore.